Greetings all, Bruno Luce here with JLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video. Today we're going to look at the Takamine CT4DX preamp. Now this preamp originally appeared on the Japanese domestic models and is now available on the Pro Series 5 and 6 models as well as some of the special edition guitars such as the TLE-1. It's an interesting preamp in that it was designed from the outset to offer full functionality for either one or two pickup systems. It works very well with the internal Takamine Palathetic pickup system and also allows the addition of an additional soundboard transducer or some sort of internal microphone system. Now, the preamp, as you can see, looks almost like a mixing console. It's covered with knobs and faders and it also has two different types of text. It has text in white and it also has text in that sort of gold color. It has a built-in tuner, four bands of EQ, two notch filters and a pickup blend control. So let's begin by looking at the physical layout of the preamp. As with all the preamps used on the Japanese-made Takamines, it comes fit into Takamines sound choice docking port and is therefore modular. If your guitar has the sound choice docking port, it can accept any one of the three preamps which are used on the Japanese-made Takamines. This preamp, the CT4B2 preamp, or the CTP2 cool tube preamp. The swapping process is fairly straightforward and can be done in about 10 minutes by a Takamine technician or even by yourself at home if you know how to release the clips inside the housing. On the face of the preamp itself you can see that it has two notch filters. These are primarily designed for fighting feedback although as I'll show later they can be used as a form of EQ. You then have a blend control which is only active in the two pickup mode and is used to blend between the primary pickup which is the internal under saddle palathetic pickup and the additional pickup which you have added. Uh, the additional pickup can be a microphone, a soundboard transducer or even a magnetic sound hole pickup such as Takamine's Triax pickup. Below that you have four bands of EQ and it's important to understand that in the two pickup mode you have two sets of two band EQ. As you can see from the text here, when the preamp is in dual pickup mode the first two sliders are a low and a high for the primary pickup and the third and fourth sliders are a low and a high for the secondary pickup. In single pickup mode you have a low, a low mid, a high mid and a high. You have a volume control and then below you have the readout for your chromatic tuner, the button to turn the tuner on and below that a button to activate your pitch correction mode. Now at this point I'm going to come out and say that among the three preamps available on the Japanese made Takamines, this is my least favorite one simply because the face of the preamp is so crowded and many of the buttons, in particular the tuner buttons, are very small and can be hard to identify and use under low lighting conditions or in stressful situations such as those found during sound check. I personally therefore prefer the CT4B preamp for general use and the cool tube preamp if I want the cool tube feature to warm up my sound. Having said that though, this preamp does have certain advantages which uh, we'll get to in a moment, not least the dual pickup feature. Let's first of all have a look at how you replace the batteries. Now, unlike on the other two preamps that we've mentioned, there is no obvious battery door or compartment visible. And the reason for that is that they needed the real estate for all of these controls. You will, however, notice that there is a clip at the top 
and the bottom of the preamp and to replace your batteries you squeeze these together and you remove the entire face of the preamp as you can see there the whole thing lifts out and below that you actually have the contacts for the preamp and here you have a drawer that pulls out with your batteries in. The system uses two 9 volt batteries and this to me is probably the biggest single advantage of the CT4DX preamp. Because it uses an 18 volt circuit, it is much better able to handle the transients and the, the big differences in volume that are found in playing acoustic guitar and it therefore has a very very transparent and a very sort of bright and a tacky sound to it and this is something that you'll hear on the demonstration. So to replace your batteries you can see that they just uh, fall out of the tray there. The, the tray is shaped such that you cannot install the batteries in the wrong polarity and once you've replaced them then you simply slide the tray back in um, the tray is also shaped such that it will it will only go in in the correct orientation as you can see if I if I try and put it in in the wrong way it simply won't slide down so it has to be installed with the batteries facing to the left and then you simply replace the entire face of the preamp making sure that it snaps into place both at the top and at the bottom. Uh, this in my opinion is somewhat fiddly and it's again difficult to do in a high stress situation. There's always the possibility that you may drop the face of the preamp and I haven't done it yet but I'm not so sure how all of this plastic would survive something like that. Now let's have a look at the chromatic tuner feature. One of the things about Takamine preamps is that they all use extremely intuitive and easy to read tuners and the CT4DX is no exception. Like the CoolTube preamp, it uses a reading that goes from left to right as opposed to the up and down reading of the CT4B preamp. In order to start the tuner, with the guitar unplugged, you press once, a light comes on to indicate that the tuner is functional and then you proceed to tune. You can see arrows to the left of the green dot represent flat and arrows to the right represent sharp. So our E appears to be a little bit flat there. Now A, A is in tune. So as you can see, the tuner responds fairly quickly and it is easy to read under stage lighting or outdoors. When the guitar is not plugged in, the tuner functions in a simple on and off manner. You press once to turn on. When you press again, the tuner switches off. Now when the guitar is plugged in, which I'm going to do now, the tuner functions in a slightly different manner. You press once to turn on. When you press again, the button begins to flash. This tells you that the output of the guitar is muted and that you can continue to tune but without sending a signal to your amplifier or to the front of house console. A final press turns the tuner off. So if you're playing and there's no sound and your front of house guy is freaking, look down and you might just see that this light is blinking. Below the tuner button you can see that there is a button labeled pitch. Now this as you can see from the numbers below the letters allows you to set the tuner to a pitch reference other than your standard A440. So to use your pitch button with the tuner in the on mode you simply press and you can see the flashing E indicates that that is my pitch reference. 
pressing the pitch button repeatedly cycles through the various options. You can have the tuner set to a reference as low as A438 Hz or A445. Now, unlike on the cool tube preamp, there is no calibration function on the CT4DX preamp. You actually have to know your A reference before you can set your tuner. So for example, if you have a piano that's flat, you'll need to experiment with different settings. Once the tuner is turned off and turned back on, it's important to remember that it actually remembers that pitch reference. So if you set your reference to a different one other than A440, it's a good idea to reset so that you don't drive yourself nuts when you're trying to tune your guitar and everyone's saying you're either hopelessly sharp or hopelessly flat. Filming into the sound hole of the guitar, you can see that the back of this preamp is just as complex as the front. Going from right to left, you can see there the main switch for the mode of the preamp. Up is single channel mode and down is dual channel. Next to that, you can see the input for the main palathetic pickup system. Above that, a small switch just visible. That is a gain switch for the palathetic pickup. It allows you to match the gain of the undersaddle pickup to whatever pickup system you've connected to the other input. Next to that, the empty RCA jack is where you would connect your second pickup system. Above that, you have a gain knob which allows you to set the gain of that pickup. And finally, on the extreme left, you can see a mini jack which is the output of the preamp and that is connected to the output jack socket of the guitar. Unfortunately, I do not currently have a second pickup with which I can demonstrate the dual pickup mode of this preamp. So we will only be demonstrating the single channel mode. So now let's hear how this preamp sounds. This is the guitar that we'll be using for this demonstration. This is a Japanese domestic model, meaning that they're normally only available in Japan. It is a DMP 751C BL, which is quite a mouthful. And basically what that means is that it is an orchestra model or OM sized body, solid spruce top, laminate maple back and side. So as you'll hear, this guitar has a really bright, clean sound. It of course comes with the CT4DX preamp and it has a traditional pin bridge, unlike the pinless bridges which are found on many of Takamine's guitars. In this case, I've upgraded the original plastic bridge pins with tusk pins to give a little bit more sustain and a little bit better transient response. Apart from that, the guitar is completely stock. The strings are the factory EXP16 Daddario strings and I'll be using a 0.60 pick from Dunlop. And here's our signal chain for the review. The guitar is plugged directly into my radial JDI passive direct box which is then connected to channel 3 of my Mackie 1202 VLZ Pro. The low cut filter is off so that you can experience the full uh, dimension of the EQ. Trim or gain is set to a hair below 12 o'clock. EQ is set completely flat and the channel and master controls are set to unity gain. The output of the mixer is connected directly to the video camera. There is no additional processing, effects or compression in the signal chain. Here's the sound of the guitar completely flat. Notch filters set fully counterclockwise which disables them. EQ set completely flat. Master volume set to maximum.
begin our demonstration of the EQ. Now the EQ as you can see is similar to that on the CoolTube preamp in that it offers a full plus minus 12 dB. The problem is the faders are relatively short and as a result it's very very difficult to set these with any degree of precision. So you can see from here to here that 6 dB of boost what if you want less? What if you want plus 3 dB? It's not really easy to do and for that reason I find that this, this preamp is probably my least favorite when it comes to that aspect of using it. One of the other things about the EQ that is good to know is what the exact frequencies are that are affected by these controls. Now this information is not found anywhere on the Takamine website or in the user manual for the preamp. When I first got this guitar, I actually emailed Takamine through my dealer in Singapore and I asked them what the center frequencies of these four bands are. And they very graciously told me that the low is set at 80 Hz, the low mid is set at 270 Hz, the high mid at 800 Hz, and the high at 10 kHz. So I personally find it quite interesting that they have chosen the two mid-range frequencies. Your low mid at 270 is useful for controlling boominess or muddiness. The high mid at 800 is a very interesting choice. Usually people will place the high mid at around 1 or 2, 2.5 kilohertz. The 800 hertz choice, I believe, is more about controlling a sort of squawky or nasally tone. Uh, you can listen to the demonstration and draw your own conclusions from that, but those are the EQ centers for these four bands of EQ. Our first setting will be with the bass or the low boosted 6 dB. boost the low 12 dB. We will now cut the low 6 dB. Our next setting will be the low cut 12 dB. We'll now return the low control to flat and we will boost the low mid 6 dB.
I'll boost the low mids 12 dB. We will now cut the low mids 6 dB. Low mids cut 12 dB. Returning the low mids to flat, we will now boost the high mids by 6 dB. We'll now boost the high mids 12 dB. We'll now cut the high mids by 6 dB. We'll now cut the high mids 12 dB. Returning our high mids to flat, we will boost the highs 6 dB.
we will now boost our highs 12 dB. We will now cut our highs 6 dB. Finally, we will cut our highs 12 dB. A notch filter is basically a cut EQ filter which has a very narrow bandwidth. In other words, it's very specific about which frequencies you are cutting. Now this particular preamp, because it's on a Japanese domestic model, does not have numbers around the outside of the notch filters. If you have one of the newer CT4DXs which comes on the Pro Series 5 and 6 guitars, you will have numbers around the outside. You'll notice that the 10 o'clock position corresponds to 100 hertz, the 2 o'clock position to 250 hertz, the 2.30 position to 500, the 3 o'clock position to 1 kilohertz, and the 5 o'clock position to 5 kilohertz. Now these filters are primarily designed to combat feedback. However, you can use them as a sort of secondary EQ, and that's the way that I use them most of the time. I prefer to combat feedback by using a combination of judicious volume as well as positioning myself appropriately with regards to amplifiers and monitor speakers. Above the two notch filters, you will see a small switch. Now, this switch controls whether the notch is 6 decibels deep or as you can see in the, the in position it will be 12 decibels deep. With the 6 dB setting you get a more mild effect. With the 12 dB setting you get a more aggressive notch filter which is designed to combat more extreme feedback. I personally always leave them in the 6 dB position. Now, as you can see, you have two notch filters, and it's important to remember that in the single pickup mode, you have both notch filters available for your main palathetic pickup system. In the dual pickup mode, notch one applies to your main pickup, and notch two applies to the secondary pickup that you have added. Our first setting will be with the notch filter at 10 o'clock, this corresponds to 100 hertz. Our second setting will be at 100 hertz with the notch set to minus 12 dB.
Our next setting will be at 250 Hz with the notch set to minus 6 dB. And now 250 hertz with the notch set to minus 12 dB. Now we'll go up a little bit. This corresponds to the 500 hertz position with the notch set to minus 6 dB. Now the 500 hertz position with the notch set to minus 12 dB. We'll now go up to 1 kilohertz with the notch set to minus 6 dB. Now the 1 kilohertz position with the notch set to minus 12 dB. Finally, the notch filter set fully clockwise, which corresponds to 5K and set to minus 6 dB. Now the 5 kilohertz position with the notch set to minus 12 dB.
So as you can hear, the notch filter is an interesting addition to the normal uh, slider EQ on this preamp. Uh, personally, I like to keep it set somewhere around the 250 hertz position, which is about um, it's about 2 o'clock and I usually keep it in the minus 6 dB position. I find it helps to clear up the low mid-range which often becomes very boomy on acoustic guitar and helps the guitar to cut through the mix a little bit better. Well everyone, that's the demonstration and review of the Takamine CT4DX preamp. As I said, this is my least favorite among the three made in Japan guitar preamps. It does have an advantage in that it uses an 18 volt circuit and therefore you have an extremely transparent and clear tone and it handles transients such as those produced by hard strumming and percussive playing techniques extremely well. On the downside, the control panel is extremely crowded. The EQ suffers from a low resolution faders. It's very difficult to set small amounts of cut and boost and the battery change is somewhat fiddly as it involves removing the entire face of the preamp. I also don't like the fact that the tuner and pitch buttons are very easy to confuse and the fact that the pitch reference does not reset itself to 440 hertz when you turn the guitar off. That's it for me for today. Thanks very much for watching. Please feel free to get in touch if you have questions or comments. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.